Oh, I think uh, half the church went out today for the kids going back to the, their classes, but that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to um, the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter uh, 10. Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to look at verses 23 through 25 today and talk about looking God's word today on, on our, our church, the church family in the society that we live in today. Let's pray. Father, I, we're blessed today for this place that you give us to meet in. Lord, as we start another week out, Lord, we're grateful that, Lord, you, as we come together as a church family, that you give us hope. Lord, if there's someone here today that maybe nobody even knows about that, they're hurting in their life. Lord, may they see you. May they feel your presence today through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, Ben and I are talked about cutting the service just a little bit short today because we've got so many people getting baptized today. So that's just a, a great thing. And um, we're looking forward to that. But you know, and, and because we're having this, the baptismal service today, I started thinking about the importance of a church family. You know, in our society today that we live in in the United States, less than, I'm being real liberal when I say this, less than 20% of people, your neighbors, friends, people go to school with, our society that we live in in the United States, less than 20% actually attend church. Less than 20%. And we can uh, know that during each season, I, you hear me talk about, you know, you drive by the different uh, soccer or baseball or football seasons and all the, the parents and the kids on Sunday morning now. And how the, the, we had never thought that years ago, the importance today and the uniqueness of what we do each and every Sunday. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And we're going to look back and forth at these verses here, but let me just read down through it. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much more exhorting one another as you see the day approaching. You know, as we, as we get up on Sunday and we decide, okay, you know, we're going to go to church tonight, if you remember that, or I can remember, you know, as a kid, you know, you just, you don't, you know, oh, we got to go to church again, you know, I, especially as a pastor's kid. But anyways, you know, I, I was there all the time. But, I just, but uh, you know, you, you look back on different things and, and I am, and, and those of you who had that privilege is your parents doing that. You were, now you look back and you're thankful. You're, you're thankful that they took the time to, to realize the importance. And, and I, I always say here, if you're visiting, the importance of Sunday starts a, a new week. And as we gather together as a church family, the, the, the thing that we want to see there, the first thing is that to hold fast the confession of our faith. Remember when you were a kid and, and you were in danger in somewhere and you would either do it or mom or dad would do it. And, they, and you would immediately, you could sense it and you would grab their hand, right? Do you remember those times, whether it was a, a, a I, I don't know what it could be, but just different situations that you're not sure what's going to go up. Maybe certain uh, an older people or a crowd of people come and you grab mom or dad's hand and they grab you tight or you grab their hand tight. You grab it in such a way or they grab it in such a way. There is no way anybody is going to take you out of their hand. Now, what God is saying here, the same way, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. What are you holding on tight to? You know, there, there is such a, a, a uniqueness of, of power in, in this book, and, and we hold on to this. And if you hold on to this, to what? You hold on to what, is being said, what has been said 
that you hold on so tight that you believe what your heavenly Father has said to us, and as we gather as a church family, and we hear God's word, we're knowing what the hope, it says, without wavering. What is it that you and I go through that maybe last week that you got a phone call or something happened that you didn't know that you were going to face last week? And what you pull back and you grab onto that you're not going to let go of is he who has promised is faithful. God is faithful. If you look at it this way, it's not to you or to me. God's faithful to his word. What his word says, he will never go back on. And that is wherever, whatever, and what is you're going through right now. You hold on and you grab on tightly to the promises of God's word as a believer. And as we gather as a body, the, 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 the God's word says we are, as a church family, this is a body of, of, of Christ. Christ is the head. We are the body. We gather together. And there is, there is a uniqueness. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Do you know, it, it, this, is, this is unbelievable the way the Lord started the New Testament church to where we're going to see those baptized. They, they were saved and baptized, and they gathered together for the teaching and the reading of the Word. And that's why we're here today. The first week to starts out that we gather together to this week. And that's what you need to hear today. That's why that call's coming in, Okay. <laughs> It's the most important thing that I said today. All right. That God wants you to know. All right. <laughs> what do you do as far as when we, the, the uniqueness of a church family? We have the church, okay? And people are kind of confused about that. Okay, church, a lot of, in our society, it's a building, okay, over here. And then we have people over here. But, but we know the church is that body. And, and how that Christ is ahead. And you know, it's so unique as is, is you look and, and we look into God's word. And that's why, you know, as I was out here today and see each other coming in and, and you're hugging each other. Maybe you haven't seen each other a week. That's what's so important. So busy through the week. We know we're going to see each other at the first of the week. And what do we know about us as believers? We know there's a connection we are a brother, we are a sister in Christ. There's such a uniqueness in that. That's why we have, it's not this building, but it, it's our church family. It is a family that we have that is made up of this, and there is power in that. And when we gather together for the opening of God's word, and we hear what God has to say, and we've seen and, and we've hugged each other through the, the, this Sunday, and we, we pray and we see, hey, how you doing, what's going on? There is such an, a uniqueness in that. Don't, don't forget that today. And even knowing as a believer and the believers all around the world that are going to church this day, the first day of the week when Jesus rose from the grave, that so few in the world, they, they don't have the hope that we have of even knowing that you know no matter what is going on in your life, you have that power through God's word that the Holy Spirit, you know, deep down, gives you that hope. It's something I really do believe that, that we take for granted. Let's go back to that verse again. Verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. That's what I was just talking about, how we gather together and the importance as we see each other as brothers and sisters in Christ every Sunday. Something that happens from that. Some of you, maybe you've had the privilege, or if you have young kids now, but maybe if you did have a tendency to go to church as a young person, as a teenager, you know there are some connections there that are lifelong, that there is a uniqueness and a power that you have that you know that, that is what that Bible, what the God's word saying is there. Consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. You call each other and you encourage each other because you have that same connection with the Lord. And in the uniqueness as a brother and sister in Christ, as a church family, is you're going to look at 
something to your brother and sister in Christ, you're going to see something that they can't see. That's so important. They're going to see something in your life and they're going to be able to encourage you that you never thought of. Do you know how important that is to help you or to help me? That you get that phone call and they know what you're going through and they're there to encourage you and give you hope and whatever it is that you're facing. It stirs it up in such a place to where, wow, thanks Joe or Susie. I mean, I can't believe, I, I never thought about it in that way. That's, that's the encouragement. <clears throat> I mean, the society that we live in today and what you have to go through and the different things that you hear on the news or everything that we face in the world, we need to hear something good. That's why this is called the good news. As a church family, we are here to say, hey, we're going to do this and we're going to gather together. It's the first day of the week and we are reminded who we are as a believer in Christ Jesus. That you hold on so tight that you have hope in any situation. And as you know that, even if you're, you're wavering, God says, hold on tight, but I need somebody else to help me. And you look to a brother and sister in Christ, and they give you a word that you couldn't get any other way. Now, whether it's here today or as a brother and sister, that, that they call you this week or something's going on, and, 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 and many times you'll say this, hey, what, how, man, how, how did you, why'd you call me tonight? Did you know? And then you go on with like what was going on in your life. The Holy Spirit led them to call you because the Spirit was touching their heart because as a sister or brother, they knew something was happening. Our church family, we, we take for granted uh, when, when we say that, we think of a building, like I said a minute ago, our, our church, our building. It, it is a, we are a family and it is, is, a, is a body of Christ in today's society, we need each other. You need, we need our, our brothers and sisters more than ever before than the time that we're living in. Let's look at the last verse. I'm going to close in a minute. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That's today. That's why we do what we do here. As the manner of some is, as of 80% of the United States of America does, as the manner of some is, that's the world that we live in today. The 80% knowing that they don't, they can't look to the Lord with hope. They don't, they don't know where to turn when something goes on in their life. We have that. As the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. You know, when we're here and we gather as believers, maybe there's, Something said that you or I, maybe we don't, maybe we don't want to hear, you know, but we're supposed to hear. Exhorting. Getting into life to where it convicts us enough to where it keeps us from falling into whatever it is out there that we're going to face this week. Whether it's discouragement or whether it's temptation. Gathering together, hearing and saying, hey, this is what the Lord said. You know, if we're not careful... This is what's going to happen. And I needed to hear that message today because I, I was wavering in some way. Why do we see what's happening in our society? Because nobody's hearing that today. Nobody's being taught what is right and what is wrong. It's whatever you want to do is okay. What God's Word is saying, if you live a certain way, I mean, there, there's, you know this as a believer, there's a peace in your life. But you can't get it any other way. You can't get it any other way. And as God's word says, so much more as you see the day approaching. Not here to scare you, but man, we see a lot going on in our world. I mean, there's it is such as you hear the word of powder keg, like the fuse is already lit, and when is it gonna hit? And we know that 
the turmoil that we see taking place in the Middle East. I, so many that I don't know that are in the military and that are way high up and generals talk about on the, some of the talk shows that, that they think that we are already at the beginning of, of this third world war. And, and you say, oh man, Dallas, don't, don't, I don't really want to hear that. No, none of us want to hear that. That's reality. That pulls us back to know as a church family, there's a purpose we know so much more as we see the day approaching. There is a coming time to an end to all of this. And, and we have hope that we know that any time, this is what I say, you know that there's a uniqueness of your age right now. Do you know that if the Lord comes back in the next several years, you have such a, a, a joy to know that you might not ever personally have to see death. We, could, we can live knowing that we're going to be raptured out of here. And that's the hope that we have. We... That's the hope that we hold on to, to know no matter what we see going on in the world, what we hear about the United States next week, or what we see in the Middle East, we are anchored in our faith in Jesus Christ. And if we do waver, we have a brother or sister in Christ we can call and say, hey, remember who's in control here? God's in control. I, I, I want to close with this verse so much more as we see the day approaching and that we need each other. There's a great passage, I believe it's in the book of Exodus, and, and Moses uh, is on top of, of, close to the top of a mountain. And there's a great battle taking place between the Amicalites and the children of Israel. Joshua is fighting that battle. He is the lead warrior. And Moses is on, a, on, on close to, to middle, way up on the, on the mountain. And the Lord told Moses, Moses, you go up there so all those that are fighting those battles can see you. In those battles today, God wants you not only to see him, but something else which is so important. And he says, Moses, as long as your arms are up and you're holding that staff high and your arms are up like this, the children of Israel are going to see and they're going to see you and, and the battle will be won as they see you, as long as you continue to hold your arms up as a focus to me. And they notice his, his battle was going on and his, he, he began to shake and his arms, he, he couldn't do it. And, and as that would happen, they would begin to lose the, the war, that battle. Great warriors they were fighting. Some of the most fierce warriors, it says, what we understand, those that they were fighting that day. They started to lose. So Aaron and Hur came along Moses. You know what they did? If you realize, they came along and they put Moses, and they said, Moses, and they put this, they grabbed this big rock, and they said, Moses, we want you to sit down on this rock and take your arm. And Aaron said, I'll take this arm. Hur said, I'll take this arm and I will hold them up for you. And we know the battle was won because those that love God were working together for his purpose. And he needed them. You and I today are facing battles that we cannot even see that as we go in to our family and to things that you face personally and I do all this everything that, man, it just comes out of nowhere. And if you're going to win, and, it, it, and as it continues to go on, you need a brother and sister in Christ. You need your church family to hold your arms up. And as long as your arms are being held up, you're going to win that battle. You need each other. I need you, and you need me, and we all need each other. And this time, so much more, it says, as we see the day approaching. As we gather here today, as we gather here every Sunday, as you call your brothers and sisters in Christ through the week, you hold on so tight to your faith that you know without wavering. And if it can, does some way, God has privileged us to have a brother and sister in Christ to hold our arms up and to know they're there 
even though we don't have the strength to get through, they're there to get us through. That, that's who God is. That, that's what Jesus has done. That he has saved us as a church family. He's given us believers that we have a connection. That he's purposed that we have a family in God's house and place that we never thought we would have. And we call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. If you don't have that today, we're going to give what we always do, what's called an invitation. Maybe you've come here today to see a family member baptized. If you don't know Jesus today, I want you to know you're missing out on the greatest thing that could ever happen in your life. I want you to know you're missing out not only that, but eternity. So much more as you see the day approaching. This, this life and the turmoil that we see. Man, you can have hope and peace. and You don't have to waver. You can know that someone has taken everything off of you and is in control of your life if you accept Christ today. Let's pray. Father, as we close today, if there's someone here who doesn't know you as their Savior, may they accept you today. Lord, I thank you for those who are going to be baptized in, in a few minutes. Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you for our church family and how you've given us this place to meet and we gather together every week now. Lord, if there's someone here that doesn't know you as their Savior, once what we have, what we talked about today, may they come forward and I can pray with them. And through the cross, through you, Jesus, they can find heaven as, as their home. And we can call them a brother and sister in Christ. And we can hold each other's arms up in the day that we live in. Lord, if there's someone here today doesn't know you as their Savior, may they come forward today and accept you. In Jesus' name, amen.